Hi guys, I'm Tiyoshi. Today, I'm going to show you taking it back and attack in YWeb program. So in the video, I'm going to show you how to take the back from the guard pass, especially the time my opponent exposed the back, I set up the seat bell to take the back, and then several ways to maintain a back control and simple choke submission. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Yeah, all right guys, like her, I'm the guard pass like this. And then it's like a classical way to take the back. It's like a lot of like outside passes like approaching from outside frame. It's like triangle like this or like leg track, right? As he does it like the pass, right? The first choice he wants to turn to my side to regain the angle. Right? That's what he wants to do. But sometimes he may not be able to do that. Like I already drag his legs to the side like this and then I approach to this. So in this stage time, he has no room to the hip escape, right? Instead of coming back to my side, He's gonna escape to the turtle like this. Look, so this is the timing I can shift to the back take. So when you do the outside step pass, you wanna have multiple options, the gallop pass and a back take. So two things you want to expect. So here, he escapes to the turtle like this. As soon as he exposes back, first you wanna make the tight frame on his upper body, the seat belt, okay? So you let go grips, and then you control his upper body. So around his upper body, okay? And this comes under his neck like this, and then, other one goes under his armpit. Then I'm going to grab my own legs like this. This is how I lock his upper body. Shape is like seat belt, like this. I want to make over under against shoulder, right? Left one goes over his shoulder. Then other one goes under his armpit. And then I grab. It's like car seat belt. This is how I control his upper body. Yeah, as soon as I make seat belt, I'm going to control his hips as well. So at the beginning of the time, there's no pressure on his hips. Okay, so from this position, I'm going to slide my left knee under his body, okay? This, like switching my base. And then from this position, I'm going to flip his hips, okay? I put my knee here, and then, as if I fall on my shoulder with him. Then I make him sideways. Ideally, I wanna make the hook on the bottom. So from this position, I scoop my hips like this, and then I pull my leg out, okay? As soon as I pull my leg out, I make a hook on his left thigh. This is the hook on the bottom, okay? And once I set up, I'm going to make the second hook. That comes over his right thigh. Then I place my hook like this. Now in rules, if you can maintain this position, like controlling his upper body with two hooks, you can get four points after you maintain this position for three seconds, right? This is the biggest score in Jiu-Jitsu. Then the best position. I do kind of like a simple outside pass. I drag his legs and approach to the side, like this. As soon as he escapes, leg grips. I want you to make the seat belt grips on this side. Especially at this position, I want to slide my hand under his neck, then I control his upper armpit like this, right, top side. If that is the opposite like this, it's so hard to make it. Then you cannot even make the control properly. Then you can automatically, naturally, should be able to make lock, like this. Then the seat belt. What you like to do is control his scapulas, okay? Like using the chest against his scapula. Then you can stop the rotation of his upper body, okay? So once I set up, I'm going to fall down with him. But before I do, I gotta put my leg in without doing it. If I work like this, look, he's be able to slide out. As if I switch my base, right? I'm going to slide my left knee in like this. Then I want to make sure that I go down with him. I'm not going down myself, right? As I drive my weight on his left shoulder when the time I fall, I can flip his body. Look, I stay connected with his upper body like this by making a seat belt. So as you can see, I put my knee here, then this is gonna be good for me, okay? Then I want to make the hook on the bottom first, like I showed before, okay? This is how I stop him sliding out. Look, can just slide out? Look, he cannot do that, right? If I make the hook on the bottom first. But on the other hand, if I start with the top hook like this, look, he can slide it out. That's why this cannot be the first choice. So I want to start with leg on the bottom, okay? So if I can find a space, I can easily slide it out. But this time, like he's landing on my left leg, it's gonna be hard to lift it up. So in this case, I use my hips, like thrusting my hips with seat belt, look. Like slightly lift him up. As I lift him up, I can pull my leg out. As soon as I pull out, I make a hook or his tie like this. Then I can stop him slide out, okay? So the next, I make the second hook, 
like this. It's very simple, right? I just want to put my head in like this. And then I got back control. The one thing you really have to be careful with your feet, right? Even though you want to make better control, you're not going to crush your feet like this, right? In rules, you cannot score four points at all. Plus, you have a risk to get submitted like this. Once he traps my ankle like this, he's be able to apply pressure. It's pretty simple. All he needs is try his hips forward. And then he can submit it, right? This is okay for all belts. Even white belts, okay to do it. So that's why please just don't cross your legs like this, even though you make a control. Just want to place your feet like this. Yeah, like I said before, I want to start with making hook on the bone like this. This is the first priority. But sometimes I may not be able to do that. He does a good job. Like he's stacking my left leg like this. I cannot pull it out. I start with the hook on the bottom. Okay. The only time I do, I want to make sure that I use my knee to block his hips, right? I'm not like a pre my hook on the mat like this. Otherwise, he can slide out very easily, right? Look, like maybe you cannot see that much, you can just push up. Like her, what I do is like push his hips with my kneecap. That's like a small detail, but it's gonna be a little difficult for him to slide out. So this is what I do, okay? And then I make the top hook like this. Now this is not over yet. What I have to do is make the second hook on the bottom, okay? So here, I slightly use my leg, like push him like this. Yeah, he has good job. Like when he gets sideways like this, then he can stack my leg. So once I can make him flat on the mat, he cannot trap my leg anymore. So that's why I'm going to pull his tie with my leg like this. Look, I make him flat on the mat. There's a lot of space, okay? As soon as I make space, I make a hook, and then I maintain a position. On the other hand, there's an other option. You can even switch side, right? You step, as soon as you step, you're going to scoop your hips forward to switch the side, as if I do a reverse hip escape. And then you make the hook on the bottom. I cannot pull my leg in this position, okay? I make a hook like this, then, so what I like is make him flat on the mat. Look, this one, then I simply make a hook. But sometimes it may be difficult to do that. In this case, I make stronger leverage, like scooping my hips to drag him to the other side, okay? I step like this, then look how I scoop my hips forward like this, and then I drag him to the other side. So I've come to the other side by dragging him. Then I'm going to make the second hook like this. Now, I want you to recognize two sides when you take the back. In this side, like her, I'm making seat belt like this, is no good side for me, okay? The, the beginning of the time I show the side is a good side for me to do. I make this type of block, right? It's the opposite side of the like, last one I showed. Then it's a less control against his upper body. He can easily pull his head out. Look, once he plies his head out like this, this is no longer seat belt, okay? Right. So that's why you have to recognize as a bad side in order for you to maintain a position. But on the other hand, at the beginning of the time, we made this type of seat belt. Yeah, this is good side for me. Look, as I control bottom of shoulder, he cannot slide it out. I can easily control his upper body. So there are two sides when you make the seat belt, you have to understand. Okay, I just wanna show you a simple, like a car grip choke, okay? Then generally speaking, you can choke your opponent, the arm on the bottom, like this, okay? The seat belt I make, and then my arms are like her, under his neck, like this. And then like I showed in the last one, this is a good side for me to maintain and attack as well, okay? But on the other hand, the reverse angle, like this. Yeah, this has less control, and then it's a bit hard to attack as well, okay? I show later why, so. S, okay, so the car grip I want to make first, okay. So I let go the seat belt grip and then I flip right side's collar, okay. I flip it here, then look like uh, as I can say inside the jacket, like this, like using my thumb. This is how I make the condition, okay. Once I sit up, I get my thumb inside the jacket, but I don't grab his collar yet. Look, I get my thumb inside. I do it several times to adjust it. Flip and get my thumb like this. 
Once I put my thumb around his shoulder like a collarbone level, that's a good place. I glove his collar with my four fingers, like cover his collar. This is how I make the grip. Now I wanna make another frame to stop him as well, okay? Especially I wanna stop his rotation at this spot, okay? I'm going to glove the other side of his collar like this. Like I make two car grips, okay? The one with my left hand, I, I'm going to apply pressure on his neck. The one with my right hand, I stop his rotation, okay? Those are different ways I use. At this position, my left arm is pretty deep, then I cannot choke it. So I'm gonna drag my elbow back. Look. By the time I drag my elbow back, look, my blade comes on his neck. Like this. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is turn my wrist like this. And then I apply the pressure. This. Look how I turn my wrist. This is how I apply the pressure. I flip the curl and then I get my thumb inside. Like this. As you can see, I grab inside the jacket, not outside, okay? If I grab the outside like this, this is not tight enough for me to choke. As I grab inside, I can purely use my blade on his neck, like this. Also, like I said, right? I wanna stop his rotation. If I just only make the one grip like this, right, he's be able to rotate a whisk, right? During the time I press pressure, look, he's be able to rotate. So in order for me to avoid another grip, I grab the far side of the car like this. So as I grab like this, it's hard for me to turn to the side. Look, this is an exaggerated way to do it. Look, as I grab it here, he cannot rotate it. So this is how I stop the rotation. So I open the collar, then I get my thumb inside, like this, okay? And then I grab the outside of the jacket, okay? So this time I don't have to grab high. I just wanna grab around his belly. Somehow I just wanna grab to stop his rotation, okay? But once I set up, I'm going to get my arm shallower. It's pretty difficult to apply pressure like this, okay? So I get my arm like this, okay? It's like uh, you cannot see my elbow at all. This is the position, okay? I drag it back. So here, it's okay with making space here, right? Like I said before, he cannot turn to that side with the color grip. Then if he turns to my side, when the time I apply pressure, look, I can apply the pressure for the choke, like he's choking himself. So that's why it's not a good choice for him to turn to my side. Okay, one and two. So once I set up, I'm going to turn my wrist, then I apply the pressure. 